Hello Algebra 1 students, this is Mrs. Yowd. Today I'm going to be teaching you Chapter 9, Lesson 1, which is about properties of radicals. Please have your journals open to page 278. A counterexample is an example that proves that a statement is false. We have been doing counterexamples quite a bit in this year, and you will use them a lot when you get into geometry next year. A radical expression is an expression that contains a square root symbol or a third root symbol or really any, any root. Uh, we could have a 4 here or a 5, etc. Uh, so any root is a radical expression. To talk about simplest form and rationalizing the denominator, I'm going to combine that into one part here. So there are two things that need to happen in order for us to get simplest form. The first is we need to take out all of the perfect squares. So for example, if I have this problem, the square root of 32x to the third, we need to write it in simplest form. So we're going to take out the perfect squares, and I can rewrite this as the square root of 16 multiplied by 2 because that's the same as 32, and then x squared multiplied by x, because that's the same as x to the power of 3. So you'll notice that when I do that, the square root of 16 is 4, so I can take that out of the square root, and the square root of x squared is x, so I can take that out. And what I'm left with is a 2 and an x on the inside, so we would put the square root of 2x. So this is the simplest way of writing the square root of 32, x to the power of 3. Now, the second thing that you need to make sure that is done is you need to do something called rationalizing the denominator. Rationalizing the denominator means that you're not allowed to have a square root or a third root or any kind of radical expression on the denominator. So let's say I had this problem 10 divided by the square root of 2. The square root of 2 is not allowed on the denominator, so what that means is we're going to multiply by a magical 1, and this magical 1 allows us to have that go away, have the, the radical sign go away on the denominator. So on the top I have 10 multiplied by the square root of 2, and on the bottom I have the square root of 4, right, because that's square root of 2 times square root of 2, which equals 2. So 2 is on the denominator. I can simplify this, 10 divided by 2 is 5, so then my final answer here would be 5 squared of 2. And there we have uh, talking about rationalizing the denominator. I'm not going to be talking about conjugates, but I will talk about like radicals. So like radicals are if you have like square root of 2 plus 3 square roots of 2, well, there is an invisible 1 in front of this first square root of 2. So you can combine those together just like you would like terms. And those combine together to give you 4 square roots of 2. Because you have 1 here and you have 3 here, so that means you have 4 all together. So the reason why we're able to simplify square roots this way is because of the product property of square roots. So go ahead and pause the video and read through this example. And on the next page, we have the quotient property of square roots, which is another way that we can simplify square roots. So go ahead and read through this example. Pause the video and read through that example right now. All right, it's time to do a few example questions. So I'm going to start with number two. Um, I notice, so remember what we need to do is we need to simplify this by finding all of our uh, perfect squares that are in 48. Now, sometimes it's hard to think about what those might be, right? You, 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 if you have a big number and you can't think of what all the perfect squares are, then that can be a difficult thing to try. But what I have found is that if you break it down, it's kind of like if you, when you do the prime factorization of a number, if you break it down into its smallest prime numbers, or at least into some numbers that are the same, that'll help you find the perfect squares. So for example, 48 breaks down into 6 times 8. And then six and eight, six breaks down into two and three, and eight breaks down into twos. I like always like to. As soon as I have an eight, I just write it as three twos. It's easier than saying four times two and then breaking down the four. 
So what we're going to do here is we're going to take out groups of two. Remember, there's an invisible two here for a square root. We usually don't see the two, but there is a little teeny tiny two there that's invisible. So we're going to find groups of uh, two. So here's a group of two, and I notice that there's another group of two here. Uh, so we have two groups of two. And then notice that we have the three is not, it uh, doesn't have a partner. So what we're going to do is we're going to take out one of our groups of two. And so that's going to be, oh, and there's a negative out front. So I need to make sure I put, write a negative. So there's a negative out front. So it'll be negative. And then I have one of these groups of two here, right? We're only taking out one of them because this represents a square root of four, these two together. So square root of four is two. So I'm going to take out a two. And then I have another square root of four here because that's what two times two is. So I'm gonna take out another one, which is another two. And what I have left inside the root is the one that doesn't have a partner. So that would be my three. So the three gets st stays inside. So I'm gonna rewrite this down here. So simplify it, we have negative four square root of three. And so that would be the simplest way to write number two. Let's take a look at number four. So we have 512, which is an awfully big number. Uh, so that's going to take us a little bit of time to break it down into its prime factorization uh, parts. So whenever it's an even number, I always start by taking out a two. So I can take out a two and we have uh, 500, sorry, 256. And then we take out another two and we have 128. And this takes out another two and we have 64. Aha, I recognize 64, that's a perfect square. So I'm gonna go ahead and just take out the eights. Notice I'm not gonna bother breaking down this any further because I could go uh, two, two, two and two, 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 but then I'm gonna be ending up multiplying them back together. So remember the goal is to find my pairs. But since this is a little tiny two here, I need to find groups of two. So I have a group of two eights, I have a group of two twos. And notice that this two doesn't have a partner, so it's gonna stay inside the root. So let's go ahead and start with that. We have a negative, don't forget, there's a negative sitting out front there, so that's gonna be part of our answer. Outside, we're gonna have one of these twos and one of these eights, and we're gonna multiply them back together, so that gives us 16. And inside the root, I'm going to leave a little bit of space here because I still need to deal with those variables, the H's. But inside the root, I have a 2. Okay? All right. So now I have an H to the power of 7. So let's talk about that real quick. If we think about H to the power of 7, there are 7 of them. So I'm just going to write that. So 4, 5, 6, 7. Okay, so now let's talk about groups of 2. So we have one group of 2 and another group of 2 and another group of 2 and then one left over. So you'll notice that we have three H's that are going to be taken out because we only take out one of each. So that'll be H to the power of 3. And notice that there's one left over. And so I'm going to put in just a singular H on the inside. So this is the simplest way to write number four. Now the trick is that when you are dealing with variables like this, if you have an even number of variables, you'll just take out half of them. If you have an odd number like what we had here, um, you think about one less. So that means one's going to be left inside. So now we're down to six of them and then you take half of that, so you're taking out three. So that's the little trick of the trade for variables when you're dealing with square roots. All right, I zoomed back over to number one and number three, because I'd like for you to please pause the video and try numbers one and three on your own. Okay, for number one, I got two root six, and for number three, I got nine g to the power of three root two. If you got anything incorrect, please pause the video and see if you can find your mistakes. All right, let's go ahead and skip to number seven. So whenever you have a great big old square root like this, sometimes it's easier to keep them together first and simplify. Sometimes it's easier to separate them out. In this case, because 196 does not divide nicely by r to the power of four, we're gonna go ahead and separate those out. So this is the same as, negative square root of 196 
over the square root of r to the power of 4. Okay, so now let's take a look at what 196 is doing here. Um, I happen to know that 196 is actually 14 multiplied by 14 because it actually is already a perfect square. So that means that I have on the numerator, I have negative, because I got my negative out front there, 14 is on the top. Now r to the power of 4 is also perfect square because it's uh, 4 r's. So we're going to take out half of those, so that'll be r squared. All right, so this doesn't really get any simpler. That's going to be my answer for number 7. For number 8, I have 49x to the power of 3 on the top. So I'll keep that there. And then I have uh, on the denominator, I have 64y squared. Okay, so 49, the square root of 49 is 7. And I have 3x's. So if I think about that, that's the same as uh, x squared times x. So I'm going to take out one of my x's and I'm going to leave an x on the inside. And then the square root of 64 is 8. And the square root of 9 squared is sorry, y squared is y. All right, so that is going to be my answer for number eight. I would like for you to pause the video and do number five and six on your own. All right, here's what I got for five and six. Please check your answers, and if you made any mistakes, see if you can find them. All right, let's skip to numbers 11 and 12. So, uh, first, I know to notice that I have a negative on the inside. Now, usually if it was a square root with a negative, uh, we would say there's no solution. However, a third root, you can have a negative on the inside because negative multiplied by negative multiplied by negative does work. So what that means is that we are going to take out a negative. Now, I already have a negative here, so that's going to be a double negative that we're taking out which means my final answer is actually going to be a positive answer. So now that I figured that out, I'm going to ignore my negatives and I'm just going to focus on the numbers. So I notice that I need to take out, I need to break down 192. So that gives me 2 and 96 because since it's an even number, and then another even number is 2 and 48. Uh, that's something that I recognize a little bit more. 48 is 6 times 8. And then we have 3 times 2, and then 8 is 3 twos. Okay, now something that uh, hopefully you're noticing here is we're doing a third root this time instead of a square root. A third root, remember when it was a square root, we took out groups of 2. But a third root, we have to take out groups of 3. So here's a group of 3 here. And then we have two twos and another 2 down here, which is another group of 3. So what that means is we're going to take out, we have one group, of two, one group of twos and a second group of twos. We're going to take out one of each, so that's going to be two times two, which is four. So on the outside, I have a four. And then notice that what's left is this three here. It does not have any partners, so it's going to stay inside that third root. So I'm just going to go ahead and write, I'm going to leave a little bit of space because I still have to deal with the um, the variable, but I I'm going to be writing third group of sorry third root of three here. So now let's take a look at the variables. So the variable is x to the power of five. So that's going to be one two three four five x's. And once again, remember we're taking out three of, of in our group this time. So we have one group of x's that we're going to take out and notice that there are two that are left on the inside. So that means that we are taking out two, uh, one x, so I'll just put a single x here, and then on the inside we have x squared. And so this is the simplest way of writing uh, number 11. Okay, let's take a look at number 12. So on number 12 I could simplify what's inside here. But I've done this problem before, and I know that that's actually going to make it a little bit more difficult for me. So instead, what I'm going to do is keep it separate. So I have the third root of 12a to the power of 6 over the third root of 512b to the power of 4. So if I break down 12, that's going to give me 6 and 2, 
and then I have three and two. So remember, I'm trying to get a third root here. And notice I don't have any groups of three. So that means I cannot take out anything from the 12. However, I can take out uh, some groups from a to the power of six, because a to the power of six is six a's. And so what I can do is I can take out one group of A and a second group of A's. So that means that on the numerator, I have A squared and then the third root of 12. On the denominator, now let's take a look at our 512. So I'm going to put it over here. 512 breaks down into 8 and 64 and then 8 and 8. So I have a group of three eights. And then for my b's, I have four b's. And so I can take out one of them. So outside, I have an eight and I have a b. And on the inside of the third root, I have another b. Now, this leads us to the issue of rationalizing the denominator that we talked about on the previous page. Notice I have a radical on the denominator, which is not allowed. So what I need to do is I need to multiply by a magical one. Now, because it's a third root, I already have one b here. So I need two more b's. I need a b squared, OK? Because what's going to happen is that this turns into b multiplied by b multiplied by b. All right, there's three of them. So now then that means I take out only one, because remember, I need groups of three. That's why I have to make it b squared. So on my numerator, I have a squared, and then I have the third root of 12b squared. And on my denominator, I have 8b squared. And the reason why, again, I have 8b here, and then this one and this one combine together to get me b to the power of 3, and the third root of b to the power of 3 is b. Well, since I already have one here, that makes, means that I have two that are left over there. And so this is my answer for number 12. Please pause the video and try number 9 and 10 on your own. Please check your answers and see how you did. Since this lesson is so long, I'm going to break it down into a couple of different videos. So this is it for this first video, and I will continue with section 9.1 and do page 280 for you in another video. Thanks for watching.